What is up everybody? Welcome to Gistic Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to auto-tune your voice in Audacity. Let's get into it. Okay, so before I start this video, I did make a video on this already, but people seem to be having a lot of problems and I'm going to try remake slash fix any problems that people were having. Um, the people will still have problems, but hopefully this video addresses the main issues that the last video didn't address. First of all, you need to make sure you have the latest version of Audacity downloaded. So go to the first link in the description that I've left and just click on the download Audacity button. Here you can pick the operating system in which you want to download it on and it will download the latest version of Audacity. So I've actually already gone ahead and done that. So I'm gonna exit out of that. Um, next, you want to download the Auto-Tune plugin, which is called G-Snap. Um, this is actually the best plugin that you can download for auto-tuning your voice in Audacity. There is no G-Snap for Mac. So there's other alternatives on Mac, but um, most of them cost, they cost money. Any um, ones that say commercial, they cost money. As This is for a $400 plugin, so it probably will be better than G-Snap. So your best bet is probably going with Voxel or um, AutoTalent. Uh, they aren't as good, but... This is the only alternative the Mac has if you're using Audacity. So since I'm on Windows, luckily, um, I want to go ahead and download the 32-bit version because the 64-bit uh, Audacity can't run the 64-bit um, VST plugins. So click the download button for 32-bit version and it will download a WinRAR zip file. I'll leave a card in the top right of my video right now that will take you to another one of my videos that shows you how to get the full version of WinRAR for free. Once you've got WinRAR installed, just go ahead and open this file and you can exit out its website now. And the .dll file is the one you want. So go ahead and open up File Explorer. There we go, it's opened up. And then you want to go to your, your hard drive where you download everything, it's probably C drive. And then you want to go to Program Files, dot, uh, times 86. And then you want to find Audacity. And then you want to go to the folder where it says Plugins. And as you can see, I've already got G-Snap downloaded, but I am going to just um, override it. So I'm going to extract this uh, DLL file onto my desktop. And as you can see, here it is. So we can exit out of this uh, zip file. We don't need it anymore. And we're going to go ahead and copy the file on our desktop and paste it into this folder. If you haven't got the plugin downloaded, it won't do this. So just go ahead and wait for it to load in there. And now you want to go ahead and just, if you had Audacity open, you want to close it and then just reopen it. Uh, minimize that if you want. Okay, so now that we've got um, G-Snap downloaded, what we're going to do is we're going to um, actually record some audio to add auto-tune onto. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> All right, so that's going to sound pretty dope. Let me just get my headphones and we'll go ahead and listen to that back. <laughs> All right, that sounds awesome. I don't, I don't think I could have done a better take than that. First take as well. Okay, so um, a quick note before you start this, you might run into some problems like I couldn't add G Snap if I already had an effect added. So make sure you have got no other effects added if you want to add G Snap. So to to actually add the G Snap uh, auto tune effect, select the audio you'd like to auto tune. Me, it's this bit, and then you're going to go to effect. Uh, you're going to go down to where it says G Snap and it will open up this window. Okay, so when you open it up, um, try not to get overwhelmed. I know there's a lot of stuff uh, to, to read on this screen. This keyboard over here is a MIDI keyboard. Um, it will be changed accordingly to which which um, key you select in. So say if I go D minor um, and just press okay, as you can see, the keys are now in the D minor scale. So don't worry about this. This is just a visual representation of the uh, scale selection. We're going to actually just put it in C major for now. If you are doing like a, a, a cover of a song or you're recording your own vocals, try um figure out what scale the beat was made in because it will definitely help with the auto-tune or at least what scale you are singing in. Uh, there are lots of music theory videos out there. Just search up music theory for, uh, for beginners and you should find videos that help you understand that concept uh, pretty easily. So we're going to first or first of all tackle the detection knobs. This uh, min freak is the minimum frequency that the auto tune will have effect on. So you want to keep that around 80 hertz. Uh, you, you can play around with this if you only want like say higher pitch vocals to be uh, auto tuned. You can raise the minimum frequency. 
if, if you're just doing basic auto tune, just leave the minimum and maximum frequency as they are. You can actually turn the maximum frequency up, but you're not really going to be making sounds over 800 hertz. So if you ask me, I say leave the minimum and maximum frequency as they are. The next knob is the gate. Um, this is um, basically, think of it as anything within the 50 decibels, the gate is what the auto tune affects. That's something that you have to adjust, but again, I'm just going to leave that at 50 decibels because I believe that is fine. If you guys didn't understand that, the gate is basically uh, the decibels in which the effects take place. The next knob is the speed. This basically allows you to adjust how many times um, this plugin checks the vocals you have recorded. A lower speed will allow you to have like a more a more rigid effect, more jumpy, uh, while a higher speed will allow you to have more more clear cut auto tune. So if you want to sound like um, the Migos or Young Thug or something like that, keeping it around eight to probably twelve would be ideal for for that for that kind of auto tune. Okay, so next we're going to deal with the corrections. Um, so you can either choose it to snap to selected notes or snap to MIDI input. If you press uh, snap to MIDI input, it allows you to edit it with a MIDI controller instead of letting the program do all the work. I would advise you to let the program do the work because there is a, quite a quite a lot of options. As you can see, it's got all, all, all the scales, so you, you shouldn't need to do it yourself. Um, so the threshold, um, this just deals with the semitones. So uh, I don't actually know too much about semitones, so you can do some further research into that. Uh, but I, I do know that you should leave it at 100 cents. Okay, so the amount is just the amount of auto-tune you want in your voice. Think of this as like saturation. Um, so if, if you need like thick auto-tune, a, a lot of it, keep it 80 to 100. If you're just trying to correct some of the off notes in your voice, you're not trying to get that auto-tune sound, uh, keep it pretty low and it, this plugin will actually still do a pretty good job. So I'm going to leave it at 100 just to show you what it sounds like with the like the full auto-tune. I forgot to tell you, um, to adjust the knobs, what you want to do is just click on the knob and drag down to move it to the left and to move it to the right, just drag up. Just keep that in mind. I forgot to tell you that at the start. Okay, so the attack and the release, um, they're actually, they relate to each other, but they're different. The attack is um, how quickly you want the specific key you are singing in or rapping in to be like corrected or auto-tuned. Um, and the release um, is how long you want that to be auto-tuned for. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to lower the release. It's automatically at 50 milliseconds, but um, if you want your pitch to be corrected pretty quickly and not sound like overly robotish, just drag that down to one. I know I set it to uh, a C major scale, so we're going to just just remember what scale you selected to, because um, this is this is where you need to really figure out what sounds best for your voice, because everyone sings in a different scale, because everyone has a different voice. <laughs> so. Uh, just play around with that. We're going to try C major first, and then oh yeah, so don't don't worry about the MIDI inputs unless you have like a MIDI keyboard. And so I, I actually don't have a MIDI keyboard, so I can't show you what these do. So I'm just going to go ahead and press apply. Uh, make sure the enable is checked. So if I go ahead and exit out of this, my voice should now be auto tuned. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So it has been auto-tuned. So now I'm actually going to press Control Z to get rid of that effect. And we're going to go um, effect and then G snap again. And we're going to try a different scale. So now I'm going to try B minor and see how that sounds. So just press OK and then apply and then exit out of it again. So it, it, it sounds pretty similar, but um, but if you're singing to like a B or rapping to a B or whatever, um, You'll, you'll be able to hear the difference because it won't fit with the beat, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so a quick note, if you click on this little hamburger bar in the bottom left, the three bars icon, uh, you can actually save the presets so you don't have to redo it every time you load Audacity. Uh, there's also some factory re uh, presets. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you, share the pane. And it's, as you can see, it's changed all the effects. Um, you can also import and export uh, presets as well. And you can read through the uh, options. It just tells you about the buffer size, the latency, and the graphical mode. Uh, so uh, we don't need that right now. So I'm just going to click apply. And then I'm going to exit out of this because we no longer need this program. And as you can see, I think that is uh, a more heavy auto tune. 
and a more more distorted sound as well. <laughs> so a quick note before this video finishes, say if I wanted to just do this, <laughs> if I just wanted to edit the, <laughs> then um, I could, I could just select that like this. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of the effect first. So I'm going to, I'm going to select the, the, <laughs> there you go. And then we're going to add a G snap to that. Um, we're going to add a, uh, no, not an achromatic. Oh, I, as you can see, I've saved, I've got it on that save preset. So we're going to go and B again. We'll go and B minor and we'll turn the speed up to eight. And that's good. And just click apply. And then now we're going to go ahead and select the All right, well, so we're going to go ahead and put a different auto tune on that. So we put on a subtle uh, C major preset and then we click apply. And now the auto tune should sound different for each part of the recording. So as you can see, it's more heavy at the start and it uh, dims off as the sound dims off. All right. So um, that is basically it for this video. Uh, you guys probably already know how to save your audio, um, but hopefully I did fix all your problems and I explained the program a bit better. If this video did help you, please hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button as well. I will be making a another auto-tune video showing you guys the like the top five best auto-tune programs that are not in Audacity, like they're their own programs. I will be starting to do some FL Studio tutorials soon as well, so stick around for that. If you do want to support the channel, like I said at the start of the video, please, um, please visit my Patreon and feel free to donate any amount. It is all appreciated and it keeps this channel alive. Okay, that is it for this video. Peace out.